We got every resource that we uh, can possibly put on the ground. Recovery is now underway across Georgia after deadly tornadoes ripped through the state, leaving behind a trail of destruction. This is a confirmed large tornado on the ground. 11 Alive storm trackers tracking the system every step of the way, working to keep you weather aware and safe. If you're in this area, in and around, I'll say, this area definitely need to uh, get to your safety place right now. It's just a house and just stuff, and you can replace that, and that's true. It's your life, though. It's your life. Still shaking, still trying to get it together. We've had a lot of damage reports coming in all throughout the day, not just from here in Georgia, but all the way back into Alabama. Families and neighbors now banding together, vowing to help each other heal from the heartbreak. During a time of need, all hands on deck. Our team is live in the hardest hit communities, helping you pick up the pieces. First at five, we are getting a better look at the trail of destruction left behind after severe weather moved through Georgia. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Bellamy. And I'm Faith Jesse. Tonight, we know that severe weather produced at least four tornadoes, claiming two lives, including a five-year-old who died after a tree fell on a car in Butts County. And Sean Kornacki, a Georgia Department of Transportation employee, died responding to storm damage. And officials tell us he was cutting down trees, working to clear the roadways in Walker County. And the National Weather Service now confirming an EF3 tornado hit Spalding County. Tornadoes also hit Merriweather, Troop, and Warren County. We have crews spread out across the area, bringing you the very latest on conditions in the hardest hit areas. Our chief meteorologist, Chris Holcomb, begins our coverage. He's live for us this evening in Spalding County. Chris? Well, you just mentioned that the National Weather Service, uh, their preliminary report says that this was an EF3 tornado here in Spalding County near the Griffin area. Where I am standing right now, this is pretty much ground zero. I'm at Kendall Drive here in the Griffin area, and the National Weather Service saying that this is the road where that worst of the EF3 damage took place. You can see behind me here, uh, we've got trees that are just uprooted here and fallen over over at the home behind me there is just nothing left with that and that is the scene all up and down this road as well as all around this area in Griffin and also here into Spalding County but this is not the only place that was dealing with the damage and the tornadoes we have tornadoes confirmed uh, also down into Troop County and also extensive damage down in Butts County as well Doug Richards tells us now more about the damage there and unfortunately reporting about a five-year-old who was killed it is clear that a very powerful storm cut through this community near Lake Jackson. On Thursday night, a five-year-old boy died in a car he was riding in when a tree fell on the vehicle. Witnesses say the storm was very frightening. Oh, I was just, I was so scared. Jessica Goodman was inside this house with her nine-month-old son when the sky darkened Thursday afternoon and the wind started whipping. I grabbed the baby and we grabbed a big old quilt and kind of covered us up like this. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's when the tree hit. And like I said, all sorts of debris fell on top of us. So I literally thought the tree had hit us. She lives in a lakefront community where the storm snapped hundreds of trees and damaged or destroyed scores of homes. I mean, just two nights ago we were living normal and then out of nowhere it's just like hours we're homeless. Autumn Roberts says a tree crashed into her two-year-old's bedroom. The family wasn't home at the time. We're glad that we were not home. Just a loud roar, roaring noise and then I saw this big tree in my front yard come down. David Calder was home. He watched from inside as a maple toppled into the carport that was supposed to protect his Chevy Corvette, his Ford Mustang, and it also took out his Dodge Ram truck. What makes it so bad is uh, my pickup truck. Calder's home was untouched. There are some homes in this community that suffered no damage, but they appear to be in the minority. In Butts County, Doug Richards, 11 Alive News. And of course, we're just seeing that damage scattered all around our area. Even the metro area has been dealing so with some of the damage as well. I want to show you, though, when this storm was moving from Alabama, 
pushing into West Georgia. The first place that it hit in Georgia was down in Troop County in LaGrange. Take a look at some of this video that we have there. The damage there is also extensive. We do have at least one confirmed tornado uh, down in the LaGrange area. We have a lot more on that part of the story coming up in just a few minutes. Brittany Klein Peter will be joining us in just a few minutes with more information on that part of West Georgia to the south and west of us. But I want to take you now to Latasha Givens. She is just on the other side of town from me. We're here in Griffin and in Spalding County. That's where we do have this confirmation of an EF3 tornado. Latasha, I know you've been out and about all day today. And are you just amazed at the extent of this damage you're seeing? It's really remarkable, Chris. What we are seeing here in Griffin is exactly what you forecast. This is the type of damage you can see on this one street alone. We're on 13th Street and William Street, and every single home here has parts of it missing, and you can see debris thrown up and down the street. And if you look over here at this tree, take a look at these roofs. They're twice my height, and as you can see, the home behind me just didn't stand a chance. All the trees down everywhere, power lines down everywhere, historical buildings down. The tornado swept through Griffin, ripping off roofs and toppling trees at every turn. Dozens were left without a home, thousands without power. I felt very helpless yesterday. Um, couldn't get to my parents or my husband. First responders have been going door to door, checking for trapped families. This orange X on the Tober's home signals it was clear. My parents, the living room, kitchen area. Jamila Tober um, says her mother normally sits nestled in a chair directly under where the tree split the roof in half. She moved just in time. It was, it was scary. Mm -hmm. It was very scary. It's just like it was dark. Meanwhile, like, her husband Richard was trying to drive home to them as debris swirled around him. God, with that thing, you know, I'm in a ditch. He says he was stuck for hours until two good Samaritans rescued him. Four large trees still block 16th Street today. After crashing down within feet of each other. Some so large they require two crews to chop them down. And one major problem here yesterday was the Spalding County 911 system was not working, but we're glad to report that system is up and running effectively. That was a major hindrance yesterday. Chris, back to you. We'll bring you more at 6 o'clock. All right, Latasha, you know, it is just so amazing seeing this damage that we have when uh, Chesley, Andrew and I were in the Storm Tracker Center the uh, uh, last night and we were in yesterday tracking these storms moving through. It's one thing seeing that hook echo on radar. It's another thing to see this damage uh, that was left behind. Now, Bo Beth Yates was also with us with our storm coverage uh, in Thunder Truck following the storms from Northwest Georgia down to the south of us. Bo Beth joins us now. Be Bo Beth, we know that the governor issued a state of emergency last night, but he had an opportunity to survey the damage today and is really initiating some response from the government now. Yes, that's exactly right, Chris. They, not just the governor, but Georgia Emergency Management Director of All and some other officials went up in an helicopter and got an opportunity to survey that damage. Now, the uh, GEMA's uh, director says it was difficult to see that damage from above, and he could only imagine what it was like um, being in the storm as it passed for residents. And now they're all coming together to try to help those people get their lives back on track. We know of people that were stranded in homes where literally the whole house collapsed and they were under the crawl space and you know we're trying to get to folks like that right now. Governor Brian Kemp alongside other state officials described the destruction left behind by severe storms that moved across the state Thursday and now the effort underway to recover. We've also got DNR, Department of Natural Resources and forestry chainsaw teams out across the state. Uh, lots of, uh, of roads blocked that are preventing uh, crews from restoring power. So we ask everybody to be patient. We got every resource that we uh, can possibly put on the ground. And to not disrupt those efforts on the ground, the governor and officials from GEMA, Georgia Emergency Management Agency, surveyed the damage by helicopter. Here's a look at damage from McDonough to Locust Grove and Griffin. The initial 
uh, viewing of something, it kind of takes you a second to absorb it all in. There's a lot of damage there, a lot of homes that we saw with roofs uh, torn off or trees on top of the homes, roads blocked, a lot of power lines down, still a lot of debris out there. I can't imagine the fear that was going through the folks that were dealing with um, being inside the homes at that time. So far, officials say there are two reported deaths, hundreds have been displaced, and their damage to homes and business across several counties. We also uh, brought in an IRT team from South Georgia. Uh, they helped with patrolling the streets to prevent any kind of looting, helping get power crews wherever they needed to get to, and we'll do the same tonight. Now, according to GEMA, at the height of the storm, more than 100,000 people across the state were without power. Now, officials are asking for patience as they attempt to restore service. Live in Fulton County, Bo Beth Yates, Live News. All right, Bo Beth, it is, you know, to see the undertaking that it takes to organize all of the rescue efforts in response, even just driving to this location. I passed so many Georgia State Patrolmen who were there working where the traffic lights are out, roads are closed everywhere. And this is going to be something that's going to take a long time to rebuild and for folks to get back to as close to normal as they can. Now, ironically, after a day of tornadoes yesterday and high temperatures up to 70 degrees, today it is much colder. I want to go to Andrew Wilson right now. Andrew, we had a couple of ice pellets coming down on me just a few minutes ago, just from this cold air and the moisture that's left behind here. And we go from tornadoes one day now to a winter weather advisory for today for parts of North Georgia. Yeah, that's right, Chris. It has been a very robust cold front that swept across the southeast. First came the severe weather that we had yesterday, not just for here in Georgia, but also for our neighbors neighbors over to Alabama and now today the colder air moves in really strong winds right now bringing that cooler air in. You can see that up towards Rome. We don't have a wind advisory in place, but winds are out of the northwest anywhere from 15 to 20 miles per hour, sometimes gust up to 25 miles per hour. So very strong winds uh, bringing in all that colder air. We don't have any snowflakes flying in Rome at the moment, but let's look up towards Blue Ridge. This is Fannin County. They've got a few snowflakes falling through. You may barely make it out here on the camera. Just some of those snowflakes passing by the camera real quick. Not sticking to the ground right now, but they do have a winter weather advisory in place there into Fannin County and most of far north Georgia where they do have some of those snowflakes falling, having even a little bit of light rain, maybe even a few uh, ice pellets within some of that there just to the west of the metro. Don't be surprised by maybe a few flurries flying through the air as we head throughout this evening. Light accumulations possible with this winter weather advisory into far north Georgia, closer on to the North Carolina state line. They've had some higher um, some higher accumulations though into the high mountains there of North Carolina in Tennessee, that's where that's going to be. We're not expecting any high accumulations or any major road impacts here into far north Georgia. Not expecting any impacts, by the way, for the Atlanta Metro. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s out there. We continue our way throughout tonight. It's going to get cold by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. We're talking low 30s. Is it going to be like that all weekend? And what can we expect for the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday? We'll talk about that coming up. All right, thank you, Andrew. Our meteorologists are working 24 seven to keep you and your family safe. To be sure you're weather aware next time severe weather strikes, make sure to download the 11 Alive News app. You can actually go ahead and scan that QR code on your screen to download it for free in your app store. And then you can turn on alerts for weather updates in your community.